yeah in terms of how our view on karate has changed our view on the way people should be taught has changed it it has changed a fair bit so i think when we first started teaching together we were both very kind of um kata application heavy shall we say Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. You're tuned in to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, I'm joined by Greg Linham. I know this is going to be a good one. Stick around. We're going to have some fun. If you happen to be new to what we do at Whistlekick, well, please start at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. I know, I know it's a podcast. I'm telling you to, to go check out stuff on a website, but it's worth it. Why? Because we give you a transcript for every single episode. All the things that we talk about, the, the websites and everything, you know, you're probably driving in your car and you say, oh, you know, uh, I would check that out, but I'm driving and I don't want to get into a car accident. Well, that's why we do that, right? So when you're done with an episode, go check out the show notes, go to the website, because that's the full show notes, the stuff that you get in your podcast players and all of it. But if you want to go even deeper with what we do, because what we do at Whistlekick is so much more than martial arts radio, check out whistlekick.com. There's just a ton of stuff over there for all the things we are making to connect, educate, and entertain all of you, the traditional martial artists of the world. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your support. And Greg, thanks for being here, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it's it. It's take, taken us a while to get here, but we finally got here. Coordinating Which was my schedules. Bad, I will and, say. Oh, pff, it doesn't matter. It matters that you're here. The, the beauty okay. of, of this is that no, if you hadn't said anything, the audience wouldn't know. That's true. That's true. I, I right. just, I, I needed, I needed to apologize for me. It's okay. It's, Thank uh, you. I accept your apology, although it is unnecessary. <laughs> uh, you know, time zones are tough. Busy schedules are tough. Trying to coordinate. Yeah. I mean, life is just chaotic, right? And, and we're it trying, sure is. To, trying to make everything work. And then there's no, there's no right answer. Right? You, you do, you do the best you can. Yeah. So, where should we start? We got a few places I think we can start. Do you have a preference? I don't. I'm I'm happy to start wherever you'd like to start. Okay. All right. So then we'll, we'll go to the the. I, I try to make this a more fun version, but kind of the, the straightforward version, which you know, it's going to be. How'd you get started in martial arts? But here's how I want to frame it. Okay. It's you're a kid, and you turn on the TV. And you see this new TV show that just started, and it's about this guy, Greg Leno. And he's he's a martial artist, but it's the first episode, and and we we need to find out all the things we need to know about him before he even gets started as a martial artist. We have to care about the character, right? Okay. So that TV show pops on, and what do we see in that first episode? Uh, you would see uh, probably a seven-year-old kid staring watching the power rangers mm. going i want to be able to do that <laughs> that that was what you would see uh yeah that that was my initial kind of uh introduction to anything martial arts and were you bugging your parents saying i want to do this or was it their idea how did how did that happen i i've, I've got kind of conflicting memories i'm pretty mm. sure i have to check but i was kind of a very shy kid i wasn't that into sports or anything so i think when i first mentioned it to my parents they were dead keen to mm -hmm. get me into some sort of uh martial arts anything sporting i think so yeah they they were they jumped at the chance to to get me into a martial arts place okay so yeah. seven you know certainly not the youngest but no. you know it's, it's a time a lot of people get involved yeah. do you remember anything about that early training I do. I remember my very first class. I, I remember it really? okay. vividly well because there was one <laughs> there was one moment in the class uh, where the teacher who would be my teacher for 25, 24, 25 years after that uh, was demonstrating a sidekick on someone holding a kick shield and, and the visual of that guy flying back through the air <laughs> <laughs> into the wall from the kick was like, oh, wow that stuck so yeah that 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 was uh, a memory that i'll 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 keep that forever okay yeah. so you're in there you're seven i assume it's a kid's class no so all of the classes were mixed 
really? adults and kids. Yeah. Okay. And we, to be fair, we still do that now, but we're just literally moving away from it within the next couple of months hmm. um, into splitting the classes. You're at the same school. Kids. Say again. You're at the same school. Uh, no, no. Oh, okay. Um, but, but Joe, who you've had on before, Joe Andrews yeah. and I, um, yeah, we kind we came from similar backgrounds, okay. um, of mixed classes and stuff like that. And we're just now looking into, into splitting them up. Why, but why yeah, no, all the classes that? when I was coming up were mixed. Yeah. Um, why change so, it? Yeah. Um, we've been thinking about it for a while. I think since we both kind of started doing MMA, jujitsu, stuff like that, where the classes are divided, we find that we get a lot out of those classes and we think if there were kids in the class, it might kind of affect the learning for us. Yeah. So we were thinking maybe the adults in our classes feel like that. And some of the feedback we've had, I think would benefit the adults. And I think it benefits the kids as well. We, yeah. they kind of get more of our attention and stuff like that. So I'm a fan of both it, at our school. We have kids classes and adult classes and then a mixed class in between. Yeah. That's a good idea work. to be fair. Yeah. Be because, you know, it, it does a few things. It's, it provides an opportunity for parents to do something with their kids because there Absolutely. are a lot of opportunities for that. Number one, number two, it reminds the adults that it's okay to have fun, right? I can, I can get the adults to be a little more youthful in, a, yeah. in a, what we call our family class and it makes the kids step up because we don't come in at that real low level of expectation in terms of, of drills and everything, right? You know, instead mm. of counting to five, you know, we're counting to 10 or something. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it makes them stretch up a little bit. And it's not a fit for all of the children, but it it works well for everybody. I, I like it. I, I think it's a good compromise. Yeah, there's definitely benefit to it. And um, it's, this is a trial, essentially. Kind mm. of the way we, we've been doing things a lot is we'll have an idea. We'll try it for six weeks or so and just yeah. try and get feedback, see how it goes. So, yeah. It, it may change. We may stick with it. We'll, we'll see, depending on the feedback, really. So yeah. you started at seven. What kept you going? I, I just fell in love with it, really. I, what I, about it? Yeah, I just I just loved it. I, I loved it. I, I It got me into, I think shortly after I started, I watched the Karate Kid films. Mm. And that I was, I just wanted to be like Dan, like, like Daniel son, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, um, do. yeah, I just fell in love with it. I was never a big fan of the sparring as a kid mm -hmm. because like I said, I was, a I was quite a shy kid. So I was always more of a cat guy than a, than a sparring guy. Um, but yeah, that's, that's changed over the years. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, how did, how did that change? Or I, um, I guess for why me, did it that was change? kind of learning more about, what the cutter does, what the cat's for, the applications and stuff like that. And then sparring more in a way that's in line with those applications. Cause we, I mean, in my old club, we used to do a lot of point sparring and we used to do kind of kickboxing style mm -hmm. sparring as well. Um, but we didn't really do any, like, I don't want to say MMA, but kind of MMA, you know, the, the the kind of sparring where you integrate takedowns and grappling and stuff so it was kind of just started doing that i i enjoyed that and yeah that's what got me more into it okay and you know if, if we're if we're if we continue that model of episodes of a tv show you know we're watching you grow and what what happens where where are some of the things that take the story in a different direction do you do you stop at some point uh, do you go off to university and that changes things? Do you join a different school? Yeah. So the, the big change uh, was when my uh, teacher stopped, essentially. Mm -hmm. He had a few, a few injuries that were kind of really getting to him. And he was, he was always a very involved teacher. He would, he was never a teacher who would kind of sit on the sidelines for the warm up or the hard training or the sparring. Mm -hmm. He would be in there with everybody all the time and when it got to a point that he couldn't do that he mm. he just kind of felt like stepping away um which was fair enough and he asked me if i wanted to take the club on so so i did with no kind of real 
uh, <laughs> knowledge of what that might entail, really. How, how so, old were you at that time? I was... I think it was probably about 25, I think. Okay. I, wasn't, I wasn't that young. Okay, so but, it's not um, like you just started. It's 18 years of training. No, 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 absolutely. Yeah, oh, the, the, the teaching stuff and the, and the, yeah, all that, fine. Yeah, nothing, no problem. It was more the um, the logistical stuff and like mm -hmm. organized, like it's just, it was just work for me that I didn't really have time to put 100% into. Um, so essentially we, I only had a few of us anyway so we kind of turned it into more of an informal session hmm. um where we would then look for somewhere else to train and that's when i found joe um and there's a story there behind which we could probably we could probably get into yeah um, I, I think that would be good you know and i mean joe's been on twice right he's had a i think he's been on episode, twice yeah and of course we we had him on as part of the the project as Susie was earning it's, her black belt, earning it. Absolutely. Yeah. And so and, so and Sue was, Sue belt. was one of the ones that came with me from, uh, when okay. we moved over to Joe. So I think she was a eighth Q maybe at the time. Um, yeah. So it was essentially, it was her, uh, a guy called Brad and, and myself who were looking for somewhere to train. It was just three of you. There was three. I would say main ones. Okay. And then there was a couple kind of extras who would sporadically train casuals. Yeah. Yeah. See so a couple of casuals, filthy yeah. casuals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. So then we found Joe and um, yeah. So, so Joe and I kind of knew of each other, mm -hmm. three or instructors who did not get on mm. essentially, which, neither of us really kind of knew the details of until more recently. Um, is that something you're willing to talk about? Um, I mean, we can do it. I, to be honest with you, I, I don't have too much to say. I know Joe spoke about his previous instructor on his mm -hmm. episode, I think. Um, but yeah, so essentially I, I knew they didn't get on. Yeah. My instructor wasn't really someone who, he didn't really talk about it that much. He just, if, if ever that uh, name or place was brought up, it was, it was known that they didn't get on, but it wasn't kind of actively discussed. Okay. So when we kind of found out that where each other was coming from, it was a bit kind of like, huh, okay. So you come from that guy and you come from that guy. Um, but yeah. So a, a Montague and Capulet. Yeah, well, I was thinking about Romeo this. It's kind, of, it's kind of a Cobra like, Kai thing. Yeah, it's kind of like Chris. It's, it's like Danielson and Johnny joining forces, and yeah. yeah. So that's kind of how <laughs> it happened. Um, yeah. All so right. no, when I, I I kind of first met Joe properly, and we we spoke, and he was starting on the journey that I was probably a couple years into in terms of transitioning from that traditional base into a more um, I don't like the word applied, but applied karate kind of area so yeah we just hit it off well and um started training there eventually i ended up teaching um i think i taught just a couple of weekend things as part of their club gradings they would always have an instructor come in mm -hmm. so he asked me to do that and then yeah we kind of just joined up together really from there um and anytime people combine anything in martial arts, even, even when the schools are part of the same organization and they have the same instructors and the same curriculum, there, there's still, there's still some challenge there, but you know, you weren't quite that much overlap. In fact, I haven't really, we don't know how much overlap you had, but what was that merger like? It was seamless to be honest with you. Really? That's, it really was a wonderful Joe surprise. Is, yeah, oh, me. Joe, Joe is fantastic at all the stuff that I am terrible at. <laughs> Okay. So all of the stuff, the, the, the self-promotion, the, like all the stuff I said that I was not good at, Joe is fantastic mm. at. Um, so essentially all I do is teach. I turn up, I teach. That's it? And then, you know, that's it. And I'm happy with that. 
like that's the I, that's the stuff i love doing anyway so yeah it was that's it was really marriage. seamless yeah yeah it's a really i i think we're a very good um team yeah um because we've got slightly different backgrounds as we both come from tra traditional shotokan mm. but my background was also kind of kickboxing as well um my instructor was looking back probably ahead of the times really mm. in terms of the cross training and integrating stuff from combat sports into the traditional arts to make them more effective so yeah we it works well the pair of us really and how long has that been going the two of you um since 2019 i would say probably officially was when i was teaching with joe so five years so that's certainly long enough to have you know we kind of started this this discussion talking about a change in scheduling but what about changes in what you teach or how you teach i imagine there have been some of those yeah it's that it's changed massively to be honest with you um which probably listening to could be a bit of a <laughs> concern to some people but yeah, in terms of how our view on karate has changed, our view on the way people should be taught has changed, it, it has changed a fair bit. So I think when we first started teaching together, we were both very kind of um, kata application heavy, shall we say. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just kind of naturally shifted forward until we both started doing jiu-jitsu and MMA and got really into kind of... I don't want to say the sport karate because that's a whole nother thing, but mm. just kind of the combat sports, the ability to be able to practice live what you teach and what mm -hmm. you're training straight away. Um, and obviously with the podcast that, that Sue and I do speaking to all these other people and getting ideas from them. Yeah. It just kind of evolved. So now we've, we're kind of set into a fairly good system, I think mm. of what we so teach. Then when people ask you, because this is a challenge that I have, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe you have advice. When people ask you, well, what do you teach? What is your style? <laughs> do you have a hard time answering that? Um, I used to, I don't so much anymore. What do you I, say? I just say karate, really. I don't really. <laughs> it's what I say. And they, yeah, a lot I mean, of them don't, don't like that. <laughs> I don't, <clears throat> I don't say Shotokan anymore because I think it would be unfair to say what we do is Shotokan. Um, so I don't really know what it is, to be honest with you. I had this chat with Ken, Ken Knight of, of Ken Fu the other day where we were kind of going, at what point does it stop becoming karate when we start adding things? And I don't know if there is that point really. Um, what I've found, and, and, and maybe this is, is helpful to you. I was hoping you were going to help me. Maybe I'm helping you. We'll help each other. Uh, it's fine. When, when, <laughs> when people ask me, you know, what do you teach? Oh, it's karate. And enough people know that there are different styles of karate. Yeah, that sure. If they don't know what they are, it's a follow-up. In the same way, well, what rank are you? I'm a black belt. Well, what, 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 how many stripes or what, mm. you know, what Don or whatever. That means you can beat up anybody. Right, exactly. <laughs> so the follow-up response that I, I give to style now is, well, you know, it's, it's a bit mixed based on my experiences, but it comes from an Okinawan philosophy. Mm. And they don't know what that means. So they, so they, they stop, which works out well for me. But what I found, and, and we've talked about this on the show, I, I, I bet you've even used some of the same language. The first thing that people start training tends to become a language for them. And they see the martial yeah. arts that they do through that language. It's, it's the, the letters, the words, the sentences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you teach me any martial art, I'm going to be approaching it more or less as Okinawan karate. And just, that's my default and I'm veering off here and there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's very true. I even since start jujitsu, we kind of look at it through that karate lens. It's, it's yeah. once it's in there, it's hard to get, it's hard to get out. It's like an accent, right? I mean, I, I yeah, absolutely, yeah. Taekwondo and my forms looked like a karate guy doing Taekwondo, <laughs> even if I tried not to do that. Yeah, I, I, so Sue has been, she was doing some weapon, uh, Kobudo training online, 
um, with James Hatch Sensei over in in Japan. Mm-hmm. They would they would zoom, and she would show me some some kata that she was practicing. And I very still very Shotokan in in the stances that I do, mm. the big movements. It's so hard to get out, even after all this time. It's it's yeah, it's still in there. It's still in there. It'll probably always be in there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure no, it will. I don't think that's bad. No, no, I don't think so. So you, you've mentioned a couple times a, I'm going to playfully say this, I don't actually mean it, but uh, uh, you were a former kata, passionate kata devotee, but maybe you're yes. in recovery from that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in rehab for it. No. Yeah. Um, no, I still, I still, I love kata. I still do. I, but just in a different way now than I used to. Mm. Got more kind of in the way that I originally used to love it. So I kind of used to love it just because I wouldn't get punched in the face doing it um, when I was a kid. Then I really kind of fell in love with tearing them apart, learning the applications and stuff mm. like that. And then I kind of, now they're more, for me, just, just a form of yoga almost, mm. just movement. I, I t- tend to do them fairly slow and I, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't practice them that often anymore. Are they part of your time. school curriculum? They are. They absolutely are. So we, I mean, we still teach them and we still do them, but I mean, in, in my own personal training, mm-hmm. it's not something I tend to do. Normally I do it if the kettle's boiling or I'm waiting for the microwave or something like that. That's it's my a good time for that. Time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, 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 I love the history of, of karate, martial arts in general, but the karate history fascinates me. Mm. And obviously kata is a big part of that. So that's, I still love that. I still read about it all the time. But as far as my personal training goes, I wouldn't say it's as kata or application focused mm. anymore. Now, how much of that is because you did spend a lot of time in that way prior. And it even sounds like maybe at, uh, um, to a degree that you didn't invest what you could have into more free form, live uh, Kumite, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, for me, I, I, th- the applications to Kata is fantastic. It's great. And I love it. And I learned a lot from doing that and studying under Ian Abernethy and, mm-hmm. All of those guys, and I love it. For me, what I would always find is the more I sparred and the more I would just live drill and live train things, pieces of kata that I hadn't necessarily drilled would just come out. It kind of went back to that old thing of just practice the kata and it will appear in fighting, Mm. which nobody really believes. But it kind of does, it kind of does happen. If you're training in the right way, yeah. Um, and I and I've said this before, and I, and I maintain you you kind of show a top MMA fighter or just a top fighter a form, and say, could you break that down? They would do it in about thirty seconds mm-hmm. because they know how to fight, they know how to move. And I think the trouble with trying to dissect a form is a, we don't really know what it looked like originally anyway. And, and B as humans, we're very good at seeing things in patterns that aren't there. It's just what Mm -hmm. we do. So you kind of end up, you know, coming up with these weird, funky applications of sometimes simple movements. You know, like sometimes it might just be a block. It might not be a, a, jumping spinning neck crank or something <laughs> do you know what i mean it might sometimes yeah. it could just be exactly what it looks like yeah um so yeah i think for me spending too much time analyzing the applications and not enough time just training was a detriment to my own personal ability if that makes sense yeah yeah because at some point you have to take the the academic things that you're you're looking at and Try them, use them, play with them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. whether it's it, you know, on the bag or on Makiwaro or sparring with with people in class, right? It, it can't just it can't only exist in the mind. It has to be implemented. Yeah. 
And I think there are, I think there are people who, because I'm, I'm very much what you're describing. I love digging in to forums. I love understanding all the many things that they could be, mm. right? You know, one of the things I'll do to challenge myself is say, okay, yeah, 99 times out of 100, these three movements are probably doing this, but what else could they be, right? Absolutely. I enjoy that. Yeah. I think, oh, yeah, I think I love that. the value, yeah. the biggest value in forums is not what they are, but the framework it gives you to ask the question of what else could they be, right? That yeah. I think is the most important part because it keeps you engaged. But then at some point I've got to grab a live body and say, all right, do this. Let me try this out. Oh, you know, it doesn't work that way. But mm -hmm. if it's, what if it's not that it's this and that starts to work better. And that's something that I'm trying to get my, I, I try to get my students to do. I'm sure you do the same thing because yeah. it, it, it gets those wheels turning. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I, I love as, as kind of, like you said, an academic exercise of analyzing for, I, st I love to do that still. But it's kind of it's in a separate box now mm. to my kind of um i don't want to say practical but live training sure. and the other thing i found as well which i i still struggle with this in terms of practicing solo kata is i don't know if this be is because i come from a, a shotokan background where everything is over exaggerated it's deep stances and it's kind of very aesthetic based um but as if we look at kata as kind of shadow boxing movements it needs to match the movement that you're doing with a partner mm. otherwise shadowing it isn't really going to give you any benefit yep. do you know what i mean so if, if you're shadowing something that that's sort of half similar to what you're doing with a partner it needs to be the same just without the partner there Mm -hmm. Whereas the nature of kata is very, like I said, aesthetic in show, in the way we would do it anyway. So there is that disconnect, which I would always struggle with because I would always find myself trying to practice the kata as I would do it with a partner. Mm -hmm. And then your kata kind of looks ugly, but you don't want your kata to look ugly. You want your kata to look really nice. <laughs> so it's, uh, There's a conflict there for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was, that was a tough one, but now that's why I've kind of separated the two and I've, I've just gone right. My solo kata is, it's that kind of meditative mm -hmm. yogic kind of, kind of practice and the application stuff just comes in when we're doing the live drills. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do, I do my forms in different ways at different times, depending on what the goal is. Mm. You know, it's yeah, I, I think, it, I think it can be, and I, to me, that's the value. Right. Is that it's once you learn the movements, what do you do with them? Right. And yeah. you can do so many things with them. You can take that, that, that form and it can be a flexibility drill. It can be a power generation drill. It can be a speed exactly. drill. It can yeah. be a practical drill. It can be relaxation. You know, one of the things I will do, I will take a forum and if I'm feeling stressed, I'll really try turn down the speed and turn it into Tai Chi for lack of a better. Yeah. Oh, I love doing that. Yeah. 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 And yeah, it's like having one song on your phone and it's the only song you need. Yeah. 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 I think, what, what... I think as a martial art, they're, they're, we're lucky to have them. Mm -hmm. I think they, they do offer a lot of benefit, even though I don't practice them that often anymore. I think, I mean, I remember during lockdown, COVID times, you'd see the BJJ guys doing solo forms on the ground. And you go, we've been the doing same, that for a hundred years. <laughs> often, often make fun of forms. Yeah, doing forms. Yeah. 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 So they, they are good to have. They're good to have in your back pocket whenever you kind of need them. Yeah. Yeah. In, in what other ways has your approach to your own training changed? Um my personal training yeah it's it's much more um i would say pragmatic now as in I, i'm very i just like to get as close to playing the game as possible mm. um so it's the drills i kind of like to do are they're not static drills they're kind of as close to live sparring as possible mm -hmm but not necessarily full sparring if we're trying to isolate a certain thing. So we kind of have our Tuesday mornings 
which is like Joe, myself, Sue will be there and whoever of the adults want to come and just, it's just an open mat really. Mm -hmm. That's kind of our own personal training time where we really pick things that we want to focus on. And yeah, it is just live drills, sparring. That That is kind of the bulk of my personal training these days. Even kind of focus mitt work's gone down for me. Really? Um, yeah, I mean, we still do it occasionally. Um, but for me, I just prefer the actual live sparring. You know, I'm not at a point anymore where I feel the need to... Um, how do I put this? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not in the need where I'm thinking I might have to hit someone. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I'm not too worried. I, I know I can hit hard. I'm not too worried about constantly reminding myself that I can do it. Um. So that's I kind of don't tend to do that as often anymore. I just like the the game, the game of sparring. Really. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a. a... It's a real time refinement process, right? Especially Absolutely, if it's someone that yeah. you're sparring with frequently because they're thinking about, okay, what am I doing to get Greg today and yeah. right now, right? Yeah. And from that last exchange. And mm -hmm. you're saying, how can I prevent that and get them? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy sparring with new people, but it's the people that I, know the best in terms of their movement. They're the ones that challenge me the most. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Sparring with Joe, sometimes he, you'll go, oh, he's figured that out now. Damn. Like I would always get him with <laughs> this and he's, he's, he's caught onto it now. How I need to change this now. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's good. Yeah. I'll tell you what, recently I've started using the Makiwara a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I never what prompted really... that. I, I bought one years ago, like a, you know, like a wall mounted one. Mm -hmm. And I never really had anywhere to put it. Mm. Um, obviously I have walls in the house, but there was never really an appropriate wall to put it on. Um, so when we moved into this new gym for our dojo, I was like, ah, mm. here we go. We can put it here. So now it's up always. So every time I'm there, I kind of try and just use that, which is quite nice. It's different from focus mitts. It's, it's kind of a little bit more slow and yeah, it's nice. I, 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 for someone who's never really used them before, it's a nice change of pace. It's a very quick way to see how precise your strikes are. Mm. How much Absolutely. you're dragging your knuckles. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and the imbalance between left and right is mm. the thing that I kind of went, Oh, say more about that. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of weird when I, when I spar, I, I, I'm very much orthodox in my kind of my power shot hand is my right hand. So that's my dominant hand. Um, but I will also switch and kind of have it at the front, but I just, my left hand is not, I don't know why it just never has been as good. It's, it's great for hook punches. That's my go-to hand for my hooks and my upper, my arcing punches, but for straights, it's just, yeah, on the Makiwara, I noticed it. I never really kind of noticed it that way before. It just felt off. It felt different. My balance, it just, it threw me completely. And I was like, huh, okay, mm. something's not right here. I need to work on this. So, yeah, it's given me something to work on. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, trying to think of how to form this question. It's it's around, you're all, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm thinking and maybe you can, even answer okay. a question that I haven't quite yeah. asked, which is every martial arts class has a flavor, right? The, the classes at a particular school, they, they all run a little bit differently, right? Yeah, even, sure, yeah. even if the segments of class might be the same, even if the, the technique, the drill selection is the same, you know, some classes are more uh, friendly, some are more militant. Mm-hmm. What would we find, you know, bring the audience into a class that you're teaching and, and what does that class feel like? So I try and keep my classes. I, I didn't realize I was doing this quite to the extent that I was until someone pointed out that everyone was exhausted, but 
I try, <laughs> so I've toned it down a little bit. I've, I've, I try and keep them fairly fast paced. I'm not mm-hmm. someone who, despite having a podcast, likes to be out talking at people um, in the class. I will if I need to, mm-hmm. but I like people to, again, get as close to playing the game as quickly as possible. Like mm. you're going to learn by doing, that's what we do best as humans. You learn to walk by crawling and then you start like you, you don't get told how to do it. You just figure it out. So I, I kind of like to get people moving as quick as possible. So generally for me, the class would be, we do a really quick warm up, um, five minute warm up. I'll kind of have a theme of, of the class. Usually we've kind of been working around sequences lately. So we'll kind of take um, like a striking exchange into some sort of takedown into some sort of ground submission. And then we'll break that apart and drill it live, do some games to kind of um, bring out the principles of those drills. And then we'll spar at the end and then we'll finish off with kata and some stretching. Um, but yeah, it's very game based. I would say is my approach these days. When different people use that term games in they the context do. of martial arts differently. So tell yes. us what you mean by games. Um, I'll try to think of an example. So, uh, so I mean, the other day we were doing the, the takedown we were essentially doing was um, the single leg takedown. Mm-hmm. Um, so the games we would do to, to kind of get close to that would be we'd start off with tag, but your goal is to use your hand to slap your partner's thigh. Mm-hmm. So that's that's essentially the game. It's just going to play tag on the thigh. That's kind of the warm up. So you're getting used to dropping your level, reaching with your hand, and connecting to where you need to mm-hmm. to grab. Then we kind of bring the drill further on. Say so you've got the leg now, so you're going to start from this holding position. You're going to try and keep that leg held. Your partner's going to try and release the leg. No takedowns or anything like that. So it's a safe way of practicing a very isolated part of the technique that we want to learn. And we would kind of just build it up like that. So then the next part would be now you're actually actively trying to take your partner down from that position. Your partner's trying to stop you and we'd build it that way. Yeah. It's kind of the way I do it. And are they smiling while they're doing this? Are they usually, having fun? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thankfully. Good. Yeah. No tears yet, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not. And, and the reason I ask about the smiles is, you know, that's part of the culture too. Right. I, yeah, I trained at school where, you know, we'll run the same drills, but the instructor, you know, don't have fun. Right. This is serious. Yeah. Which is bizarre to me. It, I, it is bizarre to me as well. It's really odd. Yeah. We try and keep it as lighthearted as possible. And I think, I think we do a good job of that. I mean, we're very, like most of, especially the kids, they're very, it's not that class where they're afraid to come and speak to the instructor. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like we're very, open and we you know we try to be as lighthearted as possible um so yeah yeah i, th- I think i think we do a good job of it i think so I mean, people might tell us differently but <laughs> well, if, if they're coming back you're doing a good job with it yeah no, re- retention is a really easy number to track and it tells you everything you need to know about what you're doing yeah yeah true yeah okay mm-hmm. So what's coming? What's and actually, you know what? Let's let's shift gears. Let's talk about your podcast. Okay, let's, let's talk about that. How did that come about? So uh, our podcast, Conversations on Karate, is the name, um, which Sue and I we do kind of semi regularly. It started essentially um, when I mentioned we used to train in like a group of three of us: Sue, myself, and a, a guy called Brad. It essentially started because Sue and I would be waiting for Brad to turn up and Sue would start asking me these questions about martial arts because she was a, like an eighth cue at the time. So she had all these kind of questions like any student. And for people who don't train in karate or don't know those terms, that's... Sorry, yeah, I should, yeah. It, 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 it counts down before it counts up, right? Yes. So, so eighth cue, yellow? yellow I think belt. she was yellow belt, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, so that's why if you go back, one of the episodes we had is called waiting for Brad. That was how it started. <laughs> yeah. So Sue, Sue would just ask these questions and, and she kind of said, oh, this would be a good podcast. And I was, I've always kind of wanted to do a podcast, but I didn't really know. 
how to do it. And Sue has a background in radio. That's her job. She works for a radio charity and stuff she like that. She has a great radio voice. She does. <laughs> she really does. I'm getting there. It's not quite there yet. My voice has changed. If you listen to the first episode of the podcast to this, it's, it is different. But So, yeah, that's where it came from, was mm. we just went to the studio one day and we just, yeah, just turned the just, mics on and spoke. Just we started really recording what you were already think. talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's where it started. And then we got uh, Ian Abernethy came on, um, who... I'd known for a long time anyway. He was kind of one of the my instructor. Used to, we used to go and train with him way back in he's the great. day. Yeah, he's he's, great. A, he's brilliant. Um, so he came on and kind of gave us a little bit of credibility and got people listening. And since then, yeah, we've spoken to to tons of, like you guys. Really, we try and speak to as many different people as possible. Yeah. And just recently, we're now trying to branch outside of that karate world now hmm. into other arts. Like we spoke to uh, Roy Dean from uh, who's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu the other day. We're definitely going to speak to you guys as well. We, yeah. Hey, we've been talking about when, that whenever you, whenever you want me. Yeah. Do you, do you find that that title having karate in the name? Is that, that make it more difficult to get non karateka to participate? I would say I'm not sure yet. We haven't okay. really looked into that. We haven't we haven't actively pursued non karate people as much yet. Okay. It's just something we're thinking of now. Um, maybe is the answer. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not, because I feel like karate is on the up lately. Right. In terms, we've of got we've got karate as the set, you know, the art, and then there are plenty of people who use karate as a generic term for martial arts. Oh God, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which. You know, there are there are times where that really bothers me. But if we're talking about the title of a podcast, I think I would want them to maybe see it as more generic. Yeah, and I think the the thing for us is with that with that name as well. It's the way we kind of look at it is what can we learn from these other people that we can bring back to our karate. Yeah. Um, at least that's the way I kind of think of it. So yeah. We'll see. We're, we've got a few people lined up that we we want to try and get in touch with. So oh, nice, yeah, nice. Uh, and and since we're talking about it right now, where can people find that? We are everywhere. So we're everywhere. on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Or we can you can go to conversationsonkarate dot com. Great. Uh, Facebook conversations on karate. Yeah, if you search search for conversations on karate, you'll find us. Okay. Good. And then you'll you'll soon be sick of us. <laughs> I don't know. I, I expected that to happen. And here we are, you know, I don't know what episode you're going to be, but you know, we're, yeah, you we're guys, closer to episode 1000. What's that? You have a lot of episodes. It's unbelievable. Oh, two, two a week for 10 years. I'll get you there. That's, that's impressive. I would say <laughs> the, uh, the organization no one... is, is something I need to aim for. Uh, I, I have, I have been accused of many things. Some of them are even good, but one thing no one has ever accused me of is giving up too early. Well, that's good. If anything, it's the opposite. It's, hey, maybe it's time to let this go. No, yeah. I'm not ready. <laughs> that's, that's not a bad way to be. No, no, I think it, it works out as a positive trait more often than it doesn't. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think who yeah. uh, was the last person we spoke to. I was uh, Noah. Noah Legal. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Noah yeah. was on on our show not long ago. I actually, I, I think I saw when you released that episode. Yeah, he's a great um, guy. I yeah, like he Noah. is. And talk talk yeah. about someone who really likes getting into the academic side of things. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. He he is a karate nerd. He to is be sure. He is. Yeah, he's not trademarked that. I thought somebody else has trademarked that. No, too, just I'm just sure. got that one, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, how has and, and this this is a question that I guess is probably for me. Maybe the audience will will appreciate this. But you know, one of the things that I've found is that as I talk to people, it makes me think, and that changes how and what I train. Oh, Have you found that? Yeah, massively. Isn't that massively. fascinating? Did you expect when you started a podcast no. that having conversations would change your training? it's it's been the biggest influence on my training like 
I probably of, of anything to be honest with you. Yeah, it's it's massively changed a lot of what we do now. Yeah. Um, I remember as, like even uh, Matt Jardine, one of the guys we had on. Mm. Um, he he would come on and do our UFC breakdowns with us, um, which used to be good fun. But yeah, he his kind of he said a line once and it immediately went ah that yes he said the goal i have for my students is i want them to be, to be able to walk into any martial arts school in the world and just be able to hold their head above water and i went i love that that's great i'm stealing that i'm running with that that it just perfectly summed up exactly what i was trying to um express so yeah. since that point it's kind of yeah everything has been moving towards that in terms of what we teach, how we teach it, how we train. Yeah. That's, um, when I started doing the show and making connections and then the direction I thought Whistlekick was going to, not just the show, but the company, um, I started talking to people and, and, you know, there are these events and they'd say, you know, we, we would invite you to present teach at our event but what what is your thing what is your what are you really good at mm. right and initially and, and this 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 was years i was really sad that i didn't have a thing you know there there are a variety of things i can i can teach about there are a number of things i'm i'm, I'm quite skilled at and can break down well but i'm not known for any one thing yeah but what i eventually came to realize was I can I can hang out with any group of martial artists and hang. Doesn't mean I'm good. Doesn't mean I'm not the worst there. But I'm not going to be in the back of the room completely lost, mm -hmm. not understanding where to put my hands and feet. Yeah. Whether we're talking about a grappling class or a weapons class or Korean, Brazilian, Japanese, Okinawan, martial, right? Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I can fake it. <laughs> and i'm make proud to of make that. it yeah yeah absolutely yeah no that's that since, since that quote from matt that's definitely been where i've i've been going and before that the, to be honest i was i was very kind of um in the self-defense world which i'm hmm. very out of now uh, it's just not a thing for me um but yeah that that quote changed, definitely changed the direction of my training. And there's been others as well in, in the podcast, but that was definitely the one that stands out. As you moved out of self-defense, what did you move more into to, to rebalance? Um, it was more kind of like, it was, like I said, I want to be able to go to any, mar not self-defense club, any martial arts club in the world. And essentially, like you said, be able to fake it if you need to. Um, and then I was kind of like, okay, so what do we need in our classes, in our system to be able to do that? Well, we need these areas and we need to be practicing these areas. Where does self-defense fit into that? It, and is it important for it to fit into that? Mm. And for me, it just wasn't at the top of the list and it were anywhere on the list really. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's been more, I would say we've moved more into, I don't want to say combat sports, but just enjoy, I'll say enjoying the martial arts for martial arts and not trying to find the self-defense in it. We're just enjoying the martial arts for what they are. Sometimes kicking and punching is fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't have to translate to saving your life. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Anybody yeah. who's learned jump spinning, any things, that's why we do that. Cause it's fun. Yeah, it course, challenges absolutely. you. Please don't use it on the street. Yeah. Well, I would say this to, like, I've been to, to various boxing gyms in the past, mm -hmm. and not once do you hear. Now, in the street, this might appear like this, like, it's just not, it's just not on their radar. But having said that, <laughs> don't get hit by one of them. Don't get hit by a boxer. Um, but yeah, so that, that's my view on it, really. I just kind of, it just wasn't on the thing, on the, on the list. So we, we moved into that, sure. the other direction. And what do you think's coming for you? You know, let's, this is, this is a, 
a cliche question, but I think it's so revealing. You and I get back together five years from now, we have another conversation. And I say, hey, Greg, what, what has changed for you since we last spoke? What would you hope that you were telling me? I'd like to, I'd like to think that um, the club that Joe and I have now is, has grown. That's kind of the main thing that I think we're focusing on at the moment. Um, but also I know Joe's much better at putting himself out there than me, but luckily for me, he puts me out there along with him. So like I said, he's good at the stuff I'm not good at. So I know we're looking to kind of teach um, seminars and courses and stuff. So hopefully have a bit of experience in that as well. We did our first one um, a few weeks ago which happened by accident, really. It was with uh, Les Bubka mm. and Ken Knight. Um, Christian Wiedervart was supposed to be there and he had some issues come up there, so he couldn't make it. And Les kind of called Joe and I and said, can you guys teach? Well, you do one day, you do the other. And we were like, okay. So that was our first. <laughs> nice. How'd it go? It was really good. It was. It went a lot better than I thought. I was kind of like, why am I doing this? Like, I, And I spoke to Ken and and les and they kind of reassured me because i was like i don't know why i'm here like i don't know what like you guys are here what, what are they what do you need me for <laughs> and they were like well that's how we feel too and i was like oh okay all right fine the moment the moment you forget that the moment you stop because i i've i work really hard to make sure that i'm how do i how do i want to say this people will sometimes point at the things that I've done or we do. And they're like, Oh, you know, look at that. And I, I don't see it the way other people see it. Right. Because mm. I see huge effort result. Right. Yeah. And when we look at what somebody else has done, we don't see all that hard work. We yeah, see no, results. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, like Les has been on the show. Great guy. Loved talking to him. Yeah. That man's working his tail off. Oh, he he. And 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 I I see his results, and I, I'm I'm super pumped for him, and I'm I'm, and I know he's proud of himself as he should be because he's he's yeah, killing absolutely. it. But it's not because of some mystical talent. And I, you know, it sounds like they were telling you the same thing. No, you're here because you're working your tail off, and you have yeah, things to yeah. say and to share, and. And, and, and I, the reason I point that out is because, you know, folks out there that might be watching or listening to this, I never want any of you to think that what is happening on the other side of these cameras and microphones isn't something you can do because you absolutely can do it. You know, maybe, maybe your first episode is a little better or a little worse than somebody else's, but, you know, you put in five, 10 years of something and you'll get there. And, and that's, we see that in martial arts all the time, right? you forget who was really good in their first couple months of training once they, you know, once they've been yeah. training five, six, 10 years, mm. nobody remembers because it's about showing up and putting in the work. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's really true. Yeah. That, that conversation with them really kind of helped. And we, mm. we, we had a thing afterwards as well, where we kind of, everybody sat around and spoke about the course and a couple of, a couple of people there were sharing some kind of really um personal things and it kind of i've kind of went all right everybody in this room has something to offer the group here and and anyone in this room could be stood up teaching and we'd all learn something i just happened to be the one that was asked to do it so it's yeah it was it was a good good experience that that helped me go oh actually okay like i'm with you now joe like if you want to if you want us to go and do this yeah i'm, I'm with you let's do let's do this let's nice. let's teach outside of our own group and see what we can and you do. have to be you have to get so good to teach people outside of your own classes yeah because <laughs> you get so little time with them and they come from these different areas different backgrounds different ranks right different reasons for being there mm -hmm. and you're trying to make sure that you're teaching material in such a way that all of them leave feeling good about the experience yeah that's hard yeah that's absolutely really hard work absolutely yeah it's, it's it's something i'm i'm looking forward to getting into we've got kind of a a roadmap where we're 
looking a plan of where we want to go in the next kind of year so we'll we'll see we'll see how that goes i'm not quite sure um how far along that we're going to share it but yeah we'll we'll, we'll see i'll well, keep you make it over this way you know let me know yeah you're not know, the okay. first to say that yeah <laughs> that might be a few years away we but, tried uh, when was this 2022 we tried to take the model of a musical tour. And I said, can we do this? Are we there? And, and I'll, I'll be honest, I was willing to go anywhere as long as I could make the logistics work mm -hmm. and it wasn't going to cost me a, a ton. So I, I was willing to sleep on couches. You know, I, I didn't even need money. It was just, you know, buy me dinner. Just like, let's, let's see what we can do with this. And even even though there was plenty of response, plenty of people wanted this, just planning it was so complicated. Yeah, well, I'll so be honest, because now you've said that, I'll, that was our, or I say our, that was Joe's idea. Joe's a musician, so I, he was like, let's do a let's do a tour, like a music tour, but we'll do it martial arts. So that's kind of what we were looking at as well, same same as you. But we haven't, yeah, we'll stick to the UK for now, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we'll go from probably there. Probably a little bit easier. You're you're all a little closer together than we are. We are, yeah, we we're, are we're, closer. We're Even though it doesn't out. feel like it. Like I said this to Ken and when he came over, like you guys over there, four hours is nothing for you. For us, that's that's just unbearable. Well, because it has to be. Well, yeah, yeah, right. A, a um, we we did an event over the weekend and one of the presenters drove 15 hours she could go I... to go because because he you know there he he wanted to it was less expensive and, and everything uh but yeah yeah you know you 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 do what you got to do and and mm -hmm. unless you live in a, there are a handful of areas in this country that are really densely populated and and those yeah. folks will say the same things that you are, you know, four hours is, is mind blowing. But for a lot of us to drive an hour or two hours is not a big deal. Yeah. See, it's, <laughs> it's, it's so different. Yeah. Like I have, I have approximately like a, on a good day, I would say it's 45 minutes on a bad day, probably an hour and a half drive to work. And that is just people. When I get to work, people say, where do you, how long does it take you to get here? People are like, Oh my God, I couldn't do that. I'm like, yeah, believe me, I don't like doing it like that for us. That's, that's a long way. What do you do? Uh, I work in, I work for retail. I don't work. I work in retail essentially. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then martial arts on the side. Yeah. 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 Fun retail life. I, I did. I did it for 20 years. I understand. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Retail, retail teaches you how how to work with people. It sure does. <laughs> yes, it does. It, it teaches you how to smile when you, when you are asked very strange qu and silly questions. Mm -hmm. it teaches you how to not punch people in the throat when they blame you for things that are nowhere close to your responsibility or fault. Yeah. I mean, that'd be my, if anyone wants to learn self-defense skills and de-escalation skills, <laughs> go work in retail for a while. And uh, yeah. Yeah. All that non-physical stuff. For sure. Out. For sure. Yeah. If people if people want to get a hold of you, where do they go? Say, say again. Sorry, I didn't hear that. If if people want to get a hold of you, website, social. Uh, so you can go to all the conversations on on karate pages I mentioned previously. Uh, it'd be either me or Sue that replies, but one of us will. Um, you can search for me personally on Facebook, Greg Linham. Um, my Instagram's at glinham 1990 um, I don't post much martial arts stuff on there, to be fair. It's normally just artwork. So, But I am on there if you want to Is that me. another passion of yours? Oh, yeah, yeah. I love it, yeah. We didn't even talk about that. Tell, tell us about that for a minute. Um, I mean, I've always loved kind of drawing and stuff like that when I was a kid. And I, and I, I didn't do it for a long time until I got an iPad Pro mm. with an Apple Pencil. And then it just became easy because I was always on my iPad. I was like, oh, this is easy. I could do this from anywhere. And mm. yeah, I just, now I do it all the time. Uh, I just love it. Yeah. I've started kind of doing a few commissions here and there. So 
yeah, it's 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 going well. Nice. Yeah, mainly comic book stuff. I like to draw, as judging by the the den of comic book stuff here. Yeah. 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 There's some some Funkos behind you. I do. I have two. I have an. I have a, an addiction. I have too many. I have. I have a few. What do I have? Five, six. None of them are in this room. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're they're fun. They're fun. They I like that you at least the ones I'm seeing. You've taken at least some of them out of the boxes. Oh, none of them are in the box. Oh Good. no! I you're, you're willing I have, to enjoy your toys. I have two in a box just because they come with a like a cover, a comic book cover in the back. So you need the box, but. Yeah, no, apart from that, I don't keep them in the boxes. Yeah. This has been great. Thank you. I appreciate Thank your you. time. I'm going to have you close us in a minute, but, you know, let me let me wrap with the audience and then I'm going to throw it mm -hmm. back to you. So, hey, all of you out there, check out Conversations on Karate. You know, hopefully you did after we had Joe on and hopefully after we did that really cool project with Sue. Hopefully you checked out the show and you're still checking out the show because they're doing great stuff. But if you haven't, let this be your third reminder to do so. Please go go find them, support them because anybody doing cool stuff, you should be checking out their show. And I, I haven't said it in a while, but I'll say it again. If you find shows that you like better than martial arts radio, watch and listen to those shows. I, I believe that your involvement in watching and listening to podcasts is going to keep you training. And that's, that's Whistlekick's mission is to keep you training. It's not about keeping you listening to my voice, right? That's that, I, that, I don't, honestly, I don't care about that. I care that you find stuff out there that supports your training. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So on that, Greg, I just want to say as well, by the yeah. way, sorry, the, the, the project you did with Sue was, was awesome. It was really cool. And I hadn't kind of heard anything like that before. Um, that, that, of... was, that was a combination, I think, of, of Andrew and I thinking very far out of the box. Mm. And one of the things I love about Andrew is he's willing to go there with me and think out of the box. Because I, I think, and, and this is probably better documented in that episode, but, um, well, maybe we should talk to her before and after her black belt test. Yeah. And it was, yeah, kind of, it, was, it was pretty it was cool. Really like I, I really had fun with that. Yeah, it was really good to listen to, and um, and to also get the panic of Sue <laughs> on the other end going, "What? I, I, I'm I'm doing this?" And it, yeah, it was it was just really cool to see all that come together. Yeah, and, thank um, you. Yeah, yeah, that was that was good. I enjoyed that. Good, good. Me too. Yeah, we'll we'll find another mini documentary sort of project at some point. Yeah. But now I'm going to have you close us, Greg. So, you know, what, what do you want to leave the audience with today? Oh, God, what do I want to leave the audience with? I mean, I would say I would kind of direct everyone to conversations on karate, but you've done that better than I could have. Um, no, but I'll just say thank you so much for having me. It's, it's, it's been great to come on. Um, I've done so many podcasts. I still find it weird when I talk to somebody else on their podcast. It's, Yeah. It's a different world for me, but we're, we're, I'm getting used to it. You're doing great. Yeah. But yeah, thank you very much again for having me. Thanks for listening to anyone who listened. And yeah, if you want to, if you want to get in touch with me or Joe to come and teach, then <laughs> then get in touch. <laughs>